First of all, I would like to introduce to you our first topic, which is how to build using one inch limit order protocol. Please give a warm welcome for me, the Nikita Kolos, backhand engineer lead of one inch. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Nick. Nice to meet everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, one inch limit order protocol and how to build something on it. Uh, but let me firstly talk about one inch a bit. Uh, basically, one inch is a DEX aggregator, and actually, one inch network right now is a list of protocols. We do have multiple of them. Most of them are focused on the DeFi interactions. Uh, one of the main one is aggregation protocol. We do also have a limit order protocol. Uh, I do have. I already had one online workshop about aggregation protocol. If you want to know more than only limit order, you can take a look on it as well. So let's uh, focus on limit order protocol right now. Um, Basically, what is limit order protocol? Uh, actually, limit order protocol is uh, a tool that allows you to actually to interact with the Ethereum or any other EVM compatible um, like blockchain in the a bit more classical way for the trades for the trading. Basically, you can make an order to, to like for example to swap Ethereum to Dai token uh, with your specific rate and with some additional constraints like for example. Uh, do it in the last, in the like the next three days or cancel. Basically, it allows you to make a, actually a lot of con different custom constraints for the swap. And uh, also, it's pretty uh, cool feature for the user because it's gasless. Basically, user just needs to create a limit order and anyone can execute it. And the user don't need to pay for the gas in this case. So it's like gasless swaps with custom interactions, with custom features and constraints, additional constraints that you need. And I wanted to focus on how it actually how it works. Basically, we do have two parties. We have uh, market taker and market maker. Basically, these two parties interact with each other during execution of limit order, like actually. The first party is market maker. Basically, in default case, it's just our user. Let's imagine there is a user who wants to trade something. Uh, for, for this case, user needs to create an order, a limit order, for the trade and sign this order, like just make a signature of, of the spe specific structure. Uh, after that, this user needs to share this limit order through our API. Basically, it, it just needs to share the structure, the conditions of this order to everyone. And you just need to wait until it will be executed, until somebody will be okay to execute this order. So the, another party who actually executes the order is market taker. It's basically someone who wants to earn on this trade, who is okay to trade with these conditions. Uh, the best example, it will be actually if, um, let's imagine that there is uh, exchange rate, for example, like right now for one, for one Ethereum, it's like 100, 1,200 DAI. Let's imagine someone wants to trade one Ethereum for 1,010 DAI. If it's okay for you, you can arbitrage this case. It's okay for you to execute this order. So basically, you can earn some, some fees on executing these orders. And that's what market takers do. They basically arbitrage the market and just get the profit into their own like wallets. So basically, what market taker needs to do, basically, you just need to search for like basically suitable okay limit orders via one inch API or using P2P, for example. A communication. After that, you need to fill limit order using a smart contract, and actually, you just need to also have some some assets to fill this limit order. Basically, if you need to fill limit order with Dai, you need to have some Dai on your wallet, and have approval for that. Basically, the whole communication between market maker and market taker. So the the overall scheme is kind of like this. So firstly, we need to sign and send an order to the API to the storage. The market taker needs somehow to search for this for specific order. After that, you just need to execute this limit order, and market maker will get funds from market taker via smart contract. The main idea here is that we execute all limit orders on the smart contract, and there are there is a guarantee that specific constraints, specific like things for this order will be executed. Like there is a guarantee for that, for these conditions. So uh, let's talk a bit about limit order structure and how it looks like. Basically, there are multiple ways how you can use limit order. There are two options. The first easy one is using API on JavaScript. If you just need to create or like fill limit orders, for that case, you just can use the JavaScript utils library. 
It's open. It's actually available on one documentation uh, site. I will show the links a bit later. That's the first option. The second option is you can actually adjust limit orders to build something more, more on it. For example, we can build um, marketplace of NFT based on limit orders, as an example. Basically, limit orders allows you to trade any asset, not only ARC20 asset, but actually any asset, even NFT asset or any asset that can have some specific interface like implemented. So I just want to tell, take more about limit order structure. It will be pretty useful for you if you want to go deep, if you want to somehow to change the structures or go to the solidity part of limit orders. I uh, just want to say that actually it's open source, so you can take a look on it, you can fork it, or do anything with it, anything you want. Basically, um, I just want to pay attention to some some things. The first one actually is um, making amount, taking amount, take your asset data and make, make your asset data. These fields actually allows you to specify how you can how the tokens, um, how what is the rate of your limit order. For example, sometimes there are cases when you have linear, like you have static formula of static rate for your limit order. So it that doesn't matter how much like you feel this limit order, the rate will be the same. But if you will implement functions using maker asset data and take care asset data and uh, get making amount and take get taking amount, you can actually specify the rate for each type of the for each moment of ex filling the limit order. That basically means you can build, for example, auction like Dutch auction, for example, on limit order on our limit order protocol. Also, want to give you to take take a look about predicate permit and interaction fields. Basically, these three parts are pretty important. Basically, permit allows you to actually, we do, we do support permits, permits on most, most of the Ethereum ERC20 tokens. So if tokens support permits, you don't need to use gas to make approvals on, this, on the smart contract for this token. You can just sign a structure for that. It's pretty useful if you don't want to pay any gas from user side. Uh, predicate is a pretty cool feature that allows you to specify additional conditions. We have multiple default conditions like timestamp uh, constraints, like um, like multi I will talk a bit more about predicate later. And also interaction actually is like a callback. You can always use interaction to do some operations with user funds before it will be executed and transferred to the taker. Um, so. That's how actually you can fill limit order. Basically, this is the main function for order execution. Um, you just need to call fill order function on, on the Solidity side. We do have a JavaScript implementation for the fill, fill order. So basically, um, what do we need to fill this order? It's just actually a v4 signature for type sign data v4 signature for maker address. In some cases, it can be a wallet. Or in some cases, it can be another smart contract. It depends on. It actually, it doesn't matter. You can do. You can f execute order on any on any contract. But I just want to take pay attention that if you use smart contract for as a maker, you just need to make a, implement, implement the signature function to verify the signature from your site. So um, making and taking amount is actually the amount that you want to fill. Uh, there are some. There are multiple types of limit order. In the default one, you can fill limit order multiple times. It depends on the limit, on the amount, remaining amount of maker and taker. But basically, uh, you can specify making or taking amount that you want to fill, and we will calculate the, the, the returns for it. Um, and the first hold amount is actually its mean return amount. Basically, it needs when you use taking amount. Um, let's talk a bit more about PZK. It's actually it's pretty awesome feature that actually makes limit order not only a limit order but actually more like arbitrary execution, arbitrary trade, trading, gasless trading stuff. Because we allow you to actually to build any any custom predicate on our limit order. So uh, you can, for example, make a predicate that says. If the if the die price goes below like than 1,000, I don't want to make a limit order for my trade of link to Ethereum. So basically, you can uh, use any predicate that you just need to implement it on the smart contract level. And um, there are some default ones like uh, for the ex for example, go uh, like filling on the market side on li limit order uh, and auto like time stamp below uh, condition that allows you to actually to execute trades uh, for like during the specific timestamp. Um, so yeah, a bit more about the get taker and get maker amount. 
basically uh, there are default functions that shows how we calculate the rates of the each of the each like of the each amount. But you can actually re-implement it, and if you will re-implementing it, basically that means that you can have your own price formula for each type for each type moment when your limited order will be filling. Um, and a bit more about execution of the limit order. Basically, each time you need to execute, each time we execute the limit order, we use actually this code. You need to take a look on. You need to take a look on it if you will try to use, for example, um, a smart contract. You need to implement a specific specific additional uh, call, call that allows to check a signature from your smart contract site. Yes, this is the case. Basically, how we validate a signature on the smart contract site. This is like an example of the calling is valid signature on your on the on your site. So each time you each time we you you use a smart contract, we need you need to implement this callback. Um, let's talk a bit more about uh, interaction and the use cases for the interaction sites. Uh, the best use case for interaction potentially can be a case when you need on the default cases of limit order. When you use a limit order, you just you don't need. You need to have a funds on the user sites, not locked anywhere except limit order. Basically, each time you execute limit order, on the, by default, you need to have user funds locked some, somewhere. But in our case, you don't need to do this. Uh, you can basically, for example, stake some assets on Compound or like on the Aave for the for, for the DAI. And on the moment when all the limit order will be executed, you can use interaction to actually withdraw user funds from the DAI and fill this limit order at the same moment. So basically, you can do multiple things at the same time. You can, for example, sell something for the DAI or like buy something using DAI and also do some API like farm or staking somewhere these, uh, these tokens. You can do you can do everything like in the same moment. And for that, you basically just need to implement interaction. Uh, Yes. So basically, there are two options how you can start using limit order. There is a quick start with the, in, on our documentation portal. There are multiple examples how you can use it using JavaScript. It's like the first core code. Um, and also, there is uh, open source code of our, all our limit order with the, on the Solidity side with tests on the right. Basically, if you want to use limit order using smart contracts, I do recommend you to take a look on uh, on our tests and on the right on the li right link of limit order. And I want also want to say that um, actually right now we are working on v3 version. It will be available like in the next couple of weeks, and it will allow you actually to use limit orders in e even more gasless way than right now. It will be even more efficient. But currently, uh, v2 is the last production version. And I think the transition to V3 will be actually pretty painless. So thank you. If you have any questions you can ask me, I will be here. <laughs>